Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hey what's up, hello, I'm Kiana, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below as well as click on that bell icon to stay notified on whenever I post my videos. And if you're not new, then welcome back. So today's video is going to be a little bit different because we're going to be doing this vlog style. So as you can see, I am in my bedroom right now. The reason that today's video is going to be a little bit vlog style is because I'm going to be showing you how to create an at-home filming studio for cheap. So essentially, um, when I first started out my YouTube channel, I had the bare necessities. And when I say the bare necessities, I literally mean a camera. Um, I didn't have any lighting or tripods or backdrops or anything of that nature. But now, after about two or three years after I've gotten really serious about YouTube, I now have a fully equipped home studio um, that I'm actually super, super, super pleased with. Um, it's taken some trial and error to finally get everything right, but I'm so glad that I finally found a setup that works for me that I'm completely, completely, completely in love with. So. I decided to start the studio off in my room just because natural lighting is bomb AF in here. Oop, there we go. Um, so I'm going to be showing you pretty much the setup and takedown of a home studio, um, DIY projects, affordable equipment, where you can purchase everything. I'll try to link all my equipment down in the uh, description box down below so you can go get your hands on all this amazing equipment that I have at home and that I got for cheap. So the first little piece of equipment or first few pieces of equipment that I have for my channel are definitely my camera and this little attachable light on the top of my camera so as you can see this is what the lighting looks like with this little portable light and then when you turn it off this is just what it also looks like so um, natural lighting lighting with the detachable light let's just take this puppy off of here so essentially, I'm going to turn this light off just so I don't blind you, but this is the newer CN160 light. It has 160 micro bulbs in it that literally light up any space. So this is just what it looks like. It comes with a few different filters. Then you turn it on. It's super bright. Um, I love this little piece of, piece of equipment. This is like my first light that I started off with um, when I just started kind of doing Instagram videos. Um, this was definitely a helpful piece of equipment, especially because I didn't have like softbox lighting or ring lights or anything of that. I just had this. So what I really love about it is that it just pops onto the shoe of your camera, which is that tiny little gap. Most cameras will have them, especially DSLRs or mirrored lens cameras or more heavy duty cameras will have that little insert where you can slide on attachments such as a mic or a light. So this is, I believe, $47 Canadian roughly, um, give or take. I think with taxes and shipping I paid like $50 for it. Definitely a great starter piece. Um, I love it. And now the camera that I film with definitely has a higher price tag to it, so I guess I wouldn't say that it's super cheap, but it is my Sony a6000 mirrorless camera. So essentially has the filming quality of a DSLR camera, but it's super, super small, super compact. Again, I'll leave links to everything down below if you want to take a look at everything. Essentially, this is a vlogging camera um, that most bigger YouTubers use, essentially just for vlogging, but it is my camera that I actually use for filming and that I use for taking pictures, just because the quality of it is pretty great. I would say, um, Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Even the mic on it is pretty decent. Um, I do definitely um, plan on getting a Canon like 80D or 70D or a Mark V or just something more elaborate for filming. Um, but for now, this is what I have. I love it. I also have like a Canon Rebel T5. I have a Canon Rebel T3. Um, I have a bunch of other cameras as well, but I always turn to this guy because um, it's great. It has filtering features on it, like a skin smoothing effect. It has um, just so many different features and settings on it. and it's, it's just a really, really great camera. And paired with this little light, it is amazing. So, um, 
let's take you downstairs to my home studio so I can show you where I do the majority of my filming. So, let's go. So, taking a little pit stop on the way. So, this is where I used to film my videos, mainly for the fact that natural lighting definitely is your best friend. If you don't have access to softbox lights or this light right here, natural lighting definitely will be your best friend because it'll just make everything look natural, softened, and won't enhance the color or change the color of the products that you use on your skin. So this used to be the old room that I did all my filming in. So this was my old desk. I left it up here have all my skincare. It's a mess, I know. Um, I haven't really touched this room in quite some time, except for grabbing all my skincare products. So, let's continue down to my actual new filming space. Love isn't the best place to find the lovers so the bar is where I go. Me and my friends at the table doing shots, tripping fast and then we talk slow. So it looks like a dungeon in here, I know. So this is the messy basement. I turned this corner into my little personal studio. So essentially, this is where all the work gets done. Got my soft boxes, I got all my makeup storage down here, um, I got my backdrop, my backdrops, my fabrics for backdrops. A light that kind of just makes everything like the backdrop I could give that like glow to it and then I have my chair that I literally just threw this fancy little piece of faux fur fabric on it to give it some pizzazz okay so let's get a little bit more into depth about equipment so these are my two softbox lights. I got these off of Amazon. They are from Canadian Studio, I think. Um, you can't get them in the States, unfortunately, but you can definitely get the newer ones, the newer uh, softbox lights. Um, these were on sale for $99 for two of them. They are fairly good softbox lights. So essentially, there's that filter over it. And on the inside, that's just kind of essentially what it looks like. So this um, softens the light. That's why I tell a soft box and it gives a soft focus, natural lighting effect to any sort of video. So I am completely in love with these. If you're going to invest in any sort of piece of equipment, um, whether it's tripods, lights, backdrops, I definitely would start off with these two guys right here or anything similar just because it's super easy to create like a backdrop or background at home, um, but very, very difficult to create at home studio lighting. I just went ahead and purchased mine instead of trying to DIY it. Um, so for $99, I got two softbox lights, the filters, the bulbs, the stands, essentially everything was included for $99. So very, very cheap, very, very affordable. This light's very freaking bright. So now back here, we have tripod number one, tripod number two. So tripod number two over here was my first ever tripod that I got. I got it from Best Buy for $20. It's the brand Slick. This is as high as it goes. Um, I think compared to me, I'm 5'11", 5'10". Um, it goes up to, I'd say, 3 inches above my belly button. So I'd say roughly it is a 3-foot tripod. Um, maybe a little bit more, maybe like four feet, three and a half, but it's just a very, very, almost like cheap, flimsy tripod, not very sturdy, um, easily gets knocked over. One thing I did like about it was the quick release, um, attachment that it had, just because you could slide it right back in, and it locks, and then you just lock it in place. Very have very standard features, so just the knob to twist up and down, side to side, just for panning. And then it had the option of, I haven't used this in forever, but it essentially had the option to flip this way as well. So you could get different angled shots. 
Um, for first starting off, I got this tripod about a year and a half, two years ago. It was great as a beginner piece, but for Christmas, I recently got this tripod. So this is from Next Tech 70 inch, 70 inch tri monopod. So essentially it can be a monopod or it can be a tripod. Um, it comes with a bunch of different features like, this in French, um, it comes with levelers, it comes with a three-way pattern head, retractable leg spikes, and a thread mount hook, which I don't know what that's for, to be honest with you. But let me grab this tripod just so we can see how sturdy it actually is. So for the sake of this video, I stood up the tripod as high as it could possibly go, and this is the height of it. Compared to me, this is where it is. It's almost at like nose level, eye level with me. Super tall. Definitely has some weight to it. Very, very sturdy. Has these grips right here. Has this hook. Again, I don't know what this does really, to be honest with you. Um, got this nifty little handle right here. Um, great for like, I guess, carrying or... Um, I just use this tripod honestly just to sturdy out a camera, to be real. I don't do those whole, the, all that kind of like movie set kind of whatever you do with the tripod. But very, very similar features to the other tripod I had. Just a lot more sturdy. This one definitely has some weight to it, as you can see. Um, definitely it's a lot sturdier. Has some good weight to it. The handles feel a lot more sturdy. This um, does the exact same thing where this can flip upwards. Um, but yeah, this is just the next tech tripod. Completely in love with it. Um, it's great because if you want to do like standing shots, it's great. Just because this is kind of like the level where it would be at. Um, very, very high. So you could stand, unlike with the other tripod, that was the full height of it. Um, so if I wanted to do standing shots, I wasn't able to with it because of the fact that it was only like three-ish feet. So I'd have to stand a pretty far distance from this, but this one, um, I could angle it downwards, upwards. Um, it's just a really, really nice sturdy tripod that I really enjoy and that I'm very grateful that I got this for Christmas. Okay, so this is going to be where the DIY comes in. So this is my backdrop. It's a $20 clothes rack from Ikea, and then just a bunch of purchased fabric from any sort of fabric, fabric store you can go to, whatever store you want to. I go to Fabric Land, and then I got these pack of, I believe, 9 or 12 clips from the dollar store for about, I think, $2. So they're great to just attach and secure the fabric. So I'm going to show you how I put it together. So let go. Essentially, these are all my fabrics. Um, let's just choose one of them. So I'm just going to go with this pink one here. Um, I'll just quickly go through what background I have. So I just have this really sparkly gray one. has a bunch of sparkly glitter on it. I have this green satin fabric. Um, really going to be nice for spring. I have this really sheer... Um, chunk of fabric. Really great for Christmas. I have this kind of like brown gray satin sparkle backdrop. If you get up close and personal with it, you can definitely see like the glitter and sheen it has. I have this cheetah print background. Um, I have just this random hunk of half sequin, half gray background. It's going to be good for like maybe product shots, don't know. I have a plain, just a black um, backdrop. Great for just having a basic. I have this gold backdrop. This sheer kind of sequiny backdrop. This is the first one I started off with. And then I have this really nice pink, pink satin backdrop. So backdrops, if you go to eBay, can cost you anywhere from about 50, 60, 70, all the way up to like $200. If you go to your local kind of craft store or fabric store, you can pick up backgrounds like this. Um, 10 bucks, $12, very, very inexpensive. Um, even sometimes if you buy a few of them, they'll throw in extra fabric. Hey, like, 
um, this just got cut off, we don't need it anymore, would you like it? And they just kind of give you free fabric. Um, and also if you go to the sale aisle of the fabrics, because um, a lot of people what they will more so gravitate towards is fabrics like these that have like those actual sequins and those are very, very expensive. Even if you go to a fabric store, they will still range you anywhere from like that 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 dollar range. Um, but if you go to the sale aisle, a lot of the times they'll just have older, uh, older styled fabrics or fabrics that are just really awkward lengths that they're just trying to get rid of so they'll be a really nice reduced price. Like for this one for instance, it was on clearance and I got it for very, very cheap. Very, very inexpensive. Yeah, definitely just go check out your kind of local fabric store or craft store and see what kind of fabrics they have lingering around that you could pick up. So essentially, I keep my clothespins down here. I usually use about three per side, and um, then we kind of go from there. So putting the clothing rack together, not very hard. Essentially, everything is detachable, and you just slide everything into the corresponding kind of hole, I guess. Um, so, you get the clothespins off the sides and just put them to the side for now. So the reason I like to keep my backdrops hung is that it's going to prevent any sort of like creasing in the fabric. Um, just keeps the fabric nice. So when doing your backdrop, I always suggest doubling the size of it just because it's always a lot better to have too much than not enough. So the first thing I do is I pick the shiniest side as that will reflect the most light and look a lot better in videos and I honestly just drape it over. This is going to be super super self explanatory but if you're very unsure how to do it then here's a quick lesson. From there I'm just going to spread this whole fabric over the whole clothing rack going over the edges. The first thing I like to do is I like to start at the top. Um, I'm going to pull this side, wrap it around that little nub, and pin it. So there's one pin. Then what I do on this side, I repeat on the other. Just get it really taut. And clamp it. If you have these little excess flows of fabric, it's totally okay. Um, we're going to get rid of those after. But um, essentially what I did is I fixed the creases in the fabric just by taking the other clothes pins off, making it as tight and taut as possible, and just clamping them again. So as you can see, I have the four clips. Now I'm going to go in with the last two. So the last two I usually do right on the bottom. So same as last time, um, there's a kind of like a notch right here where um, the clothes rack extends out of. I like to apply it just above that notch just so it has a little bit of room to kind of sit and hold it in place. This is like my little DIY background. Uh, I go in with like a steamer and steam all these little creases out of it. But this is just like a quick overview of the rest of my studio. If you want a, like an in-depth like makeup collection or whatever, just let me know down below. But I'm not going to go in depth about what all makeup I keep stored in these bins just because like that would take forever. Um, Got a few things like I'm proud of over here, like my Ipsy badges and whatever, and like this cute little decorative dog. But again, I'm not going to go to too much more into depth about my studio. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up and leave your comments and feedback in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to hit me up on my social media. It's Kiana Karen's XO on. Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Um, I'd love for you to all give me a follow. Go support my content if you loved this video. Again, if you want to see a makeup collection storage video, um, let me know in the comment section down below. I can totally get into that. But as far as this video goes, um, I hope you comment and subscribe and check out my channel and check out my other videos. And I'll see you in my next one. Mwah. Love you.